Welcome to Chapter 1, An Introduction to Lifespan Development. In this first section, we'll learn what we mean by lifespan development. By the end of this section, you should be able to discuss the distinctive features of a lifespan perspective on development. First of all, when we say development, we're talking about patterns of change that begin at conception and continue throughout the lifespan. This includes both periods of growth and periods of decline. Once upon a time, we tended to only think about development in terms of childhood development, because lots of obvious changes take place as we move from infancy to toddlerhood to childhood to adolescence. We didn't really pay much attention to changes in adulthood. In fact, it was thought that there wasn't really much developmental change in adulthood at all, and that only changes in old age were decline. Now, however, uh, we have a much more well-rounded understanding of patterns of change that are happening from the time we are born to the time we die. We now understand that developmental change takes place throughout adulthood as well as during childhood, and there is plenty of adulthood to explore. We know that humans can live up to 122 years, which is considered the maximum lifespan, although the life expectancy is closer to 79 years. Life expectancy is the average number of years that a person born in a particular year can expect to live. Health care, nutrition, living conditions, genetics, and other factors can all contribute to a person's life expectancy. In prehistoric times, an average person could only expect to live approximately to 18 years old. However, with improvements in sanitation, housing, education, and medicine, especially things like antibiotics and vaccines, the life expectancy for a person born in 2017 in the United States rose to 79 years. Now, obviously, some people live longer lives and some people live shorter lives. Individual behaviors such as dietary choices, exercise, smoking, drinking, and so on all contribute significantly to these variations. Earlier, I said I want you to be able to discuss the distinctive features of the lifespan perspective on development. First of all, development is lifelong. We experience changes in all points of the lifespan, from birth to death, not just in childhood. Second, development is multidimensional. It's not just about physical change. You're also changing cognitively and socially. At every age, your mind, body, and emotions and relationships are affecting each other. Development is multidirectional. We experience growth and decline at every age. It's easier for you to learn a new language when you're two years old, but you can do things at 20 that you couldn't have done at two, such as solving algebraic equations. Development has plasticity, which means that you have the capacity for change. You can literally change your brain. At any time, uh, or any time you have ever seen someone recover functioning after a brain injury, that is due to plasticity and all the rehabilitative exercises they did to induce those changes in their healing brain. Development is multidisciplinary. Many different disciplines contribute to our understanding of human development, including psychology, sociology, anthropology, neuroscience, and medicine. This helps us to tackle questions such as, how do families and schools influence intellectual development? Development is contextual. We'll talk more about this in a moment, but people don't exist in a vacuum. Your family, your peers, your schools, your community, and your country have all influenced the person you have become. Second to last, development involves growth, maintenance, and regulation of loss. At some points in life, you are focused on improving your abilities. At some points, you are simply trying to maintain the abilities that you have. And sometimes, especially as we get older, we need to make modifications to our activities in order to account for any loss of capacity. For instance, as your knees and other joints become stiffer, you may decide to switch to lower impact workouts. That way you stay fit while reducing the risk of injury. Finally, development is a co-construction of biology, culture, and the individual. The brain shapes culture, but it is also shaped by culture and the experiences that individuals have or pursue. You have influence over your own development. You are not destined to do or be one particular thing. By actively choosing your environment and activities, you can forge your own developmental pathway.
Going back to what I said about development being contextual, I mentioned that nobody lives in a vacuum. There are a few different ways that our context can influence our development. One is age-graded influences. These are experiences that are common to almost everyone in the same age group. For example, most teenagers are experiencing puberty. Uh, women over 50 are experiencing menopause. Children around 6 years old are starting formal, formal schooling and adults over 65 are hoping to retire. Some contextual changes are, uh, are some contextual changes are called normative history graded influences. These are experiences that are common to people of a particular generation due to historical circumstances. For example, a lot of people who remember living through the Great Depression tend to be more thrifty with their money because of their experiences. We are likely to see major and long-lasting influences of the COVID-19 pandemic as well. And then finally, non-normative life events. These are unusual occurrences that have a major impact on an individual's life. Uh, so these are things that don't necessarily happen to everyone. So um, the death of a parent at a young age and so forth would have influences on a person's development, but they're not common to the majority of people. At the present time, some concerns that are front and center of the lifespan development uh, study are issues concerning health and well-being, parenting and education, and sociocultural context and diversity. Questions are asked such as, what factors are causing the obesity epidemic? How can older adults cope with declining health? How does divorce impact children? What is the relationship between child poverty and education? How do these things vary in different cultures? What about between or within different ethnic groups or socioeconomic statuses, genders? Understanding these things helps us to inform social policies related to these issues. A social policy is a, a government's course of action designed to promote the welfare of its citizens. Some metrics of how well a society is faring include infant child mortality rates, poverty rates, how well the society's elderly population is faring, and whether citizens have access to affordable health care. More recently, the intense and pervasive use of technology has also become a point of interest for developmental researchers. Essentially, the more we come to understand how people's physical, mental, and social development is impacted by the world around them, the better informed we can be in making decisions to help create a happier, healthier world. And I think that's worth studying.